let's first start off with creatine. Oh my gosh, creatine. Because <laughs> as a female, especially with creatine, I mean, it's all about the bros at the gym and women should stay away from that. But is that true or just a myth? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. So I'm going to come out of the gate strong on this one just to quickly address that question. I have Dustin Moore here from California, who is a registered dietitian, and I know you got some credentials that I could try to explain, but I think it is better coming from you telling us a little bit about your background, please. <laughs> okay, happy to do so. So I'm a registered dietitian and nutrition scientist. I've worked in the field of nutrition and dietetics for about 13 years. My areas of focus and what I have done and what I've tried to do as a professional is evidence-based practice, scientific communication, and then helping people to improve dietary quality and just seeing how that affects them later on down the road. I've worked as an adjunct faculty, uh, worked as adjunct faculty for a number of years, teaching a whole bunch of different classes, cultural social effects of food, intro nutrition for the freshmen. They're always a lot of fun. <laughs> biochemistry, nutritional biochemistry, a uh, whole bunch of that business. I've done research focusing mostly on college students and young adults, looking at how do you improve diet quality for them? How do you find simple and easy ways that you can make into habit forming methods of this is how I can improve my diet regardless of the circumstances you find yourself in. And then I work clinical rounds as well. I work hospital rounds as well. I help patients. I do assessments, checks, and provide the medical nutrition therapy that patients may need depending upon whatever it is they've been admitted to the hospital for. So we're not working with an amateur today. We know we have somebody who knows his stuff, and we appreciate you taking your time out of Thank your you. busy schedule to talk with us. No, my pleasure. Thank you very much. When did you realize, like, this is what you're supposed to be doing? When I knew I didn't want to go to medical school, Megan. No, I'm kidding. That's a <laughs> shorthand out of the joke. There's honestly some truth to that, but here's the thing about that. The home that I grew up in. The home that I grew up in, we loved food, and I was a heavy child. I was a very overweight child. I got picked on. I got teased a lot as I got bigger, as I got older. Still took an active interest in food and got interested in sports, playing football, uh, being very active. And then I had a natural inclination towards health and biology, probably just in part due to that stuff I experienced when I was younger. Uh, but the real kicker for me of what took it off and what I really got fascinated by was the preventive side of things is for all the patients who I see in the hospital, we do our best to educate them, to help them get back up to speed where they need to be. I would like you to not have to deal with that in the first place. And there's a lot of things that, you know, preventatively you can do with whatever your circumstances are. There's a lot of things that you can do that can help reduce those risks or make life better for you. And if I'm going to be more honest about it, what I really look at at it is there's all this life out there and I just want you to have as much of it as possible. None of us are born equal. All of us have slightly different bodies, are going to have slightly different functions. Some people optimally function a little bit better than us, jump higher than us, <laughs> yes. are better at sports than the rest of us. Other people, not so much. Other people are going to be born with chronic conditions. Other people are going to be born with serious lapses. But whatever your station is, I want you to get as much of this life as you can out of it. And part of that is your diet. And I think we're going to be able to touch on a lot of those subjects. And people are going to find out that their biology is definitely different with inside. And we'll kind of get some of those myth busters today. Can't wait. Let's first start off with creatine. Oh, my gosh. Creatine. Because <laughs> as a female, especially with creatine, I mean, it's all about the bros at the gym. And women should stay away from that. But is that true or just a myth? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. So I'm going to come out of the gate strong on this one just to quickly address that question. Let me talk about creatine for a second because that's a cool one to go off on to. And let me just share a couple of thoughts. So major life regrets that I have. Number one, why did I not buy that Amazon stock? Number two, why did I let Mark talk me into doing track? Number three, <laughs> why did I not start creatine supplementation until I was in my late 30s? For real, on the subject, on the literature, like the most well-known use of creatine is for exercise enhancement, muscle power, because mm -hmm. it's a quick energy source that goes to your muscles and is fantastic for doing strength training. And we see that people make improvements, increased uh, volumetric gains on their workouts because they have more power from the creatine. But I mean, even beyond that, creatine right now is being investigated for all other types of benefits where we see maybe it helps with reducing like injury or helping recover from injury 
injury. In older adults, they're looking at focus on, or they're looking at research that's on focus and attention and memory and starting to find some interesting preliminary findings related to that as well. So it's not just a men's thing and it works just as functionally in women as it does in men. Okay, so it's not going to just bulk me up Im immediately. Or it's actually going to help no. me in a lot of ways. No, so I mean that's on, as an offshoot. That's one of the that's one of the myths that I commonly get is it's a steroid, right? Like I have yeah. to monitor it and be careful with it. It's it's not a steroid. What it is is just acting as that fast energy supply. It goes into the muscle tissue. When your muscles are trying to produce ATP, that's the most common energy source. That's the main energy source that the human body needs. It's the fastest mechanism to produce it in quick measure. Whereas what steroids do, steroids go in, they bind to a specific receptor in the muscle, they switch on all of these genes that then create, or they start what's called muscle protein synthesis. So not in the same league as one another at all. Creatine is an energy energy source, uh, it's not a steroid. There's no point of concern for uh, thinking of any of the effects of the off effects of what you would get from like taking steroids, which is not like I would endorse people doing that. Uh, right. That's doctors use that under legal circumstances. Nobody should ever use ever ever should use steroids illegally on those cases whatsoever. But for creatine, when you're taking it within the appropriate dose, following proper supplementation guidelines, it's fantastic. Okay, I like that. Now, I've also read that creatine may even support brain health. What is there truth in there? Okay, so that that's where it's getting kind of novel with it and okay. looking at the research related to your attention span, your focus, memory. It seems initially what the research is telling us is maybe there are some benefits related for older adults. Okay. Uh, I don't think I've read anything that's convincing about how you see it in like young, healthy adults, uh, younger than, um, I'm not going to assume your age or anything like that, but <laughs> younger than us. Okay. Younger than myself, I okay. should say. Uh, not so much an effect that we see there, but in older adults, there appears to be something there, but the studies are still fairly new. The research is new. Nothing that we can say with, you know, any level of certainty, like, oh yeah, this is totally going to have this effect on you. Okay. So. I, I'm loving this. Okay, so anybody out there who is thinking about creatine, though, okay. just what little bit of advice would you give them for someone like me? Okay, so if you're new to the scene and starting with creatine supplementation, I would just first of all say it's easy. It's very simple to get started. A standard okay. dose that people take is five grams a day. You take it, throw it into like a little bit of juice, a little bit of water, something like that, shake it up, mix it up, drink it down, and that's easy. There's really no, I mean, there's a lot of people who will try to get serious about like the timing and eating it with food and <laughs> during the gym. Like you've ever been to the gym and you have people who walk around and they have like their big jugs? Yes. I assume that there's going to be a little bit of pre workout or maybe some creatine in that that okay. they have with them. Uh, but you, you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be that complicated <laughs> if you don't want to. You can keep it simple. Just mix it up with that dose, try it once a day, and that's all you need to get started. If you want to get more technical, loading it, like there is loading versus maintenance of creatine, but on the simple okay. phase, if you just want to get started, just do the five gram dose per day. Just that, just that easy. Oh, I love easy. Easy is good it's for me. It's easy. It's easy. <laughs> it's convenient. But yeah. So creatine, not as scary, bottom line, as some people would it think. Is, it is probably the most tested nutraceutical on the planet. Thousands of studies that have looked at its not only efficacy, but its safety and overwhelmingly safe for adults to consume. The only side effects that we ever really see that are a problem are from adults taking too high of a dose or too large of a dose at once or anything uh, or too large of a dose where then it causes like GI distress, causes like gastric okay. symptoms and they start feeling like more icky as a result of it. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, no. And again, I'll just, again, take this back over to the point about it too, girl power. <laughs> yes, literal, literal ATP girl power, which we need more of. Most of the research, interesting enough too, is done in men. And when we look at other stats, for example, like for people who buy creatine, like if you had to guess, like what percentage do you think are women who are purchasing creatine? Seven percent. I'm guessing it's it's low. It's twenty. Uh, the figure that I saw is twenty one percent. Okay. Of twenty one percent of people who purchase creatine are women. And mm -hmm. you know what? I'm going to quote Matthew McConaughey here. Yes. McConaughey. I'm sorry. I botched that. I'm going to quote Matthew McConaughey. How do you say that guy's Matthew name? Matthew McConaughey. Thank you. Criminy. <laughs> here for you. Matthew McConaughey. I'm going to quote Matthew McConaughey here and say we got to crank those numbers up. <laughs> We got to get more women who are purchasing creatine and using it, okay? Plain and simple. Okay, I'm going to also quote them and go, all right, all right, hey. all right. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. And honestly, if anybody has questions, I mean, ask. That is the Just biggest ask. thing. We want to help you. We want to give you some useful information. My entire job, everything I hope to do as a dietitian and health professional.
professional is help you and give you good information that you can use for whatever you want to do to improve your life. Okay, now I have a question for you because this is something that I sometimes deal with. Okay. Is creatine causes dehydration and muscle cramps, is that true or is that another myth? Okay, so in terms of the dehydration and muscle cramps, I'll say just simple answer is no. I don't see any evidence to support that in the general population of healthy adults who take it. When you have creatine, you see that creatine, you ingest it, you consume it, and it gets put into your muscles where it's used for that quick energy source. We see that there is a little bit of a change in what's called the intracellular volume. So you have a little more water that follows the creatine into the muscle. So honestly, it's kind of like instant results. All of a sudden you're bulked. Your muscles get a little bit bigger hypertrophy. We call it muscular hypertrophy. The muscles get a little bit larger because a little bit of your body fluid has followed it and gone into it, okay. but it doesn't change the overall total body water volume that you're carrying. It doesn't okay. shift it or do anything like that. So nothing in that sense that it's necessarily going to cause dehydration. It doesn't make you pee more. And in terms of muscle cramps, I mean, muscle cramps more likely is going to be from some other type of imbalance or poor fluid shift or something that was going on previous uh, electrolyte imbalance that maybe you were dealing with beforehand, uh, or maybe just like you know, a rough workout, some tough problems on your muscles afterwards, nothing that would be caused by the creatine. Okay. So you're saying that your your muscles can get sore when you're working out? Believe it or not. <laughs> believe it or not. I mean, you got to be careful when you go to the gym. I hear all sorts of things. Chronic long-term swelling, mm -hmm. elevated dietary intake. <laughs> I love this. Who knows? <laughs> okay. So something else I've also seen before and that people have said is that creatine could cause hair loss. What about oh that gosh. one? gosh. Okay. Okay. This is I don't want to lose my hair. <laughs> this is personal for me. Okay. Uh, because on that... One study, one study that was conducted back in 2009, and it was looking at collegiate male rugby players. Okay. What they saw in the study is that after these guys had taken a dose of creatine, they measured that they had a uh, elevation in what's called DHT. DHT is just a hormone precursor that's very strongly associated with... Uh, baldness and hair loss. Okay. They didn't even measure hair loss in these guys. They didn't even measure baldness in them, but because this one study saw that there was an increase in that DHT, then all of a sudden it took off with this myth about, with this myth about how, well, maybe creatine is going to be causing hair loss or baldness or something like that. And no study has ever replicated those results. So one study, 2009, one that study, was it. One study, 2009, didn't even observe actual baldness in the men, <laughs> didn't follow them long enough. They were young, uh, strapping rugby players. Okay. So I would not put any weight into that argument. If you're going to lose hair, that's probably something that was determined long ago in the cosmos. And uh, there's alternative treatments for that instead. Now, you say you kind of take this one personal. <laughs> um, why do you take it personal? Because I get that all the time from my dad. My dad's bald. <laughs> OK, I got However, it. However, <laughs> I'm pretty sure baldness, I think the way that that equation works is baldness comes from your maternal Matern the, the maternal grandfather. So my grandfather yes. on my mother's side is the one who determines if I'm susceptible to that equation. And I feel like I'm still going strong. You're still you're doing well. Actually. Thank you very much. I don't want to push my luck, but I feel like I'm still OK. OK, well, that's good. You're, you're doing good on the hair department over there. So there you have it. Don't worry about losing your hair. One study, 2009. Boom. That myth. Kick gone. that myth out the door. I like it. You're going to maintain your wonderful locks of hair on your head. You'll be fine. What about the addictiveness of creatine? Is that a thing? Only if you're addicted to results. Megan. Oh, yes. Okay. You're speaking my language. Go. <laughs> Are you addicted to results? I'm all about the results. Which, by the way, like, I don't think anybody, <laughs> I don't think anybody in the room caught my my quip earlier about going to the gym and long term swelling. Did anybody yeah. catch that? Oh yes. Okay. So just, I maybe I over anticipated <laughs> the delivery on that one. Honest for real though is like I said earlier is that one of my biggest investments and I really do wish I had started using creatine earlier on. I frequently exercise, uh, have for a long time as a habitual pattern, and just the noted benefits, improvement, recovery from exercise, reduction. Uh, reduced likelihood of injuring yourself, like all of these other things that we see observed from mm -hmm. uh, creatine supplementation and usage. Uh, the fact is, is it makes exercising easier is a way to say it. It gives your muscles more power to do more work. More work means more reps. More reps means more gains, means ultimately mm -hmm. that you're putting on more muscle. And as I'm sure you can attest to, people like seeing results. This is true. And you also brought in the word easy. I also like to find that within there too, if it can be a little easier. I mean, it's got to be hard work sometimes. For me. <laughs> you don't go to the gym. You don't go to the gym because it's always easy. No. You leave feeling like crap, but you leave feeling good at the same time. Right? Yeah, definitely do. And it, hey, if creatine 
protein can help with that, you might as well give it a try. And does it or does it not cause kidney damage? No, it does not. Uh, I'll be very simple on the explanation for that one. There is a metabolic waste product that we generate called creatinine. We okay. use creatinine as a way to measure and assess the function of the kidneys. We use it in hospitals all the time. I, I do it all the time when I do rounds in the hospital, checking on patients. We can measure kidney function looking at that creatinine. It does not mean, that does not mean that the creatine supplement is causing kidney damage. What the creatine is, is it's the energy source and then when it's used, it's broken down, it's excreted as creatinine. And if a person has pre-existing kidney problems, if they have a disease state, if something is going on with them, it's going to, you're going to see the natural elevation of creatinine. It has nothing to do with the creatine at all. So wipe that one away. Wipe that one clear away. It does not cause kidney damage. Okay, this is all fantastic. I'm learning so much, but just to kind of really hone it in a little bit, just so everybody can really focus on what are some of the benefits to creatine. Okay, summary take home points. Number one, the main the main benefit you get from creatine supplementation is increased muscle power, which will help translate into improved muscular hypertrophy, helping build your muscles and make them stronger because they have the ability to do more work and exercise more. Other benefits that we see related to it is we see that it's very good at quickly replenishing glycogen. So after you've worked out and exercised, helping your body to restore energy levels back up to what they were beforehand. Another instance, is injury recovery okay. and reduced risk of injury. It seems that for athletes who have hurt themselves and for athletes who are just working out steadily, consistently, they are less likely to get injured. And if they do get injured, they are more likely to recover quickly from it. We see that people are more heat tolerant in exercise, that they have a higher tolerance for uh, hotter exercise conditions. And then the last point is related to benefits to the elderly, especially with neuroprotective effects, helping to improve memory or focus uh, this uh, preliminary research that we're starting to see emerging in that population too. So what I'm hearing is it's not just for men, it's for women too. Absolutely. All right. So I think we've learned a lot of things and definitely bust some myths today. I hope on so. <laughs> I hope I've convinced you too to give it a shot as well. Or more importantly, and I'm not being facetious about this, I'm saying this as a father of daughters. Okay. Uh, they're not old enough to take creatine yet. <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> but I'm saying this is that, you know, for women, I want women to get these benefits as well. And if it's an easy, safe, and effective supplement, ladies, get on the ball. You're welcome in there as well. It's not just for the gym bros. We need more of you in there trying it. We need you in the gym more often we want you making those gains that's what we want to see that's what i want to see personally is feeling empowered to be able to do something like that so the percentage of ladies buying creatine was at what 20 some percent the, from from creatine from consumers from those who are purchasing it it's about 20 21 percent okay ladies the number we need to lift lift that number along with the weights how about that all right okay all right, all right. <laughs> oh matthew mcconaughey Bring again. It back again i love it <laughs>